In a resplendent cloud, the Holy Spirit appeared, the Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And since we're celebrating the Feast of the Transfiguration today, we'll say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flame of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministered to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the vision during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages served him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are around him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is king, the most high over all the earth. The mountains melt away like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all people see his glory. The Lord is King, the Most High, over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the Most High over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord is King, the Most High, over all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. 
Beloved, we do not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we have been witnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that glory unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You would do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning stars rise in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. The Transfiguration is a story of hope. It's a story and a message of hope. First to those three apostles, Peter, James, and John, but then it also teaches us about hope as well. First of all, these, these apostles had seen, had seen Christ as a human, as a very, in many ways, very ordinary human, although special, there were clearly miracles, but they had never had this, this glimpse of his divinity. They believed it, but this moment really allowed them to see, see the divinity and it gave them something to remember because at this point, Christ was approaching his passion. And while Christ knew and understood that he was going to be crucified and killed and rise from the dead, uh, the apostles were not, were not really aware of how that was all going to play out. And so Christ brings them here and shows them this divinity. That way they can, they can see something with their eyes. They can have something that they've, they, do, they, they experience in a more powerful way than anything else, such that when the crucifixion happens, they can remember this. They can use their memory. They can remember back to this moment and then have hope that the Lord actually has things in control. And I think in our own life, we, we have moments in our life, in our spiritual life, of, of great, great joy or great closeness to the Lord. Maybe it's an experience uh, in prayer one day. Maybe it's something that, that happens. It could be, um, could be for example, a, a sacrament. Um, maybe a wedding day. 
It could also even be something that happens at the time of, of the passing of a loved one. But we can have these experiences of the Lord that are very powerful, where we very, feel very close to the Lord. Uh, and these are then supposed to, th this story here is a good reminder that for us, these are our transfiguration moments. These are when the Lord brings us up and really shows us who he is, really shows us that he's present. And then we can remember these moments. We can keep them in mind. And then in those times in our life where maybe we don't feel as close to the Lord, when we come to Mass or to adoration and we don't feel the Lord's presence as close to us, we can take these moments to remember back to this moment or these moments in our life when we were close to the Lord and draw strength from them. So this transfiguration is show, supposed to show us how to have hope. This hope is called the anchor of the soul because it keeps us, um, keeps us rooted, keeps us close to the Lord, just as the anchor holds a ship. Hope is supposed to hold us close to the Lord, even when other things are difficult. And the other way that this is a big message of hope is that we get to see, we get to see a glimpse of what we are going to look like when we're glorified in heaven. Christ was already glorified because he was God, but we're going to get the chance to share, share in that same glory, share in that same light with the Lord. He's going to give us that same dazzling light, which we also saw in Moses back when, the, when he would come down from the mountain after talking to the Lord. Moses also had this brilliance that the people could not look on. And so in many ways we can see that as similar to here, that when we in heaven get to see the Lord face to face, we also will be brilliantly bright. And so that can also be something that we can look forward to and that we can hope, hope for. Um, so yeah, the message, think of the transfiguration as a message of hope, a message of strength. Um, and as we, as we come to Mass, we can always remember and thank the Lord for those moments that we have been close to, that we have felt His presence, that we have felt really close to Him, those transfiguration moments in our own life, and then draw strength from those to continue to trust in the Lord especially in those times when we don't feel as close to him. Now let us stand and bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> For all who have received holy orders in the church, may the blessing and protection of our God be upon them and uphold them in the ways of truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For community and government leaders, may the Lord grant them vision to see the truth of the dignity of every human person. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are struggling for any reason in their lives of faith, may the risen Christ give them strength and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community gathered here, May the Lord grant us courage in sharing our stories of God's goodness with others. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, may they rejoice in eternal life with God. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Father Tim Retkovsky, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, Hear these prayers we offer you in trust and hope today. We ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanse us from the stains of sin, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through whom Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses, and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form, which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone for, forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. Holy he, holy he, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I that you should enter under my roof, but only let me say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you willed to make manifest in his glorious resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. My almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Immaculate Mary, your praises.